All right, so our final uh, performance here is, uh, is, is uh, Art Benjamin. Uh, Arthur is a, uh, yes, I know, it's great. All right, so many of you know him from his TED Talk, one of the most watched, I think over 10 million views now of his show. He's a professor of mathematics at Harvey Mudd College. Uh, he's the author of a number of books um, that uh, popularize what he does, but his most popular uh, things are the, his teaching company courses. He has four of them now, uh, how to do what he does and a lot more. Uh, on uh, mathematics and games and probabilities and, and those sorts of things. You're about to witness a terrific show, after which we'll do, then do our panel and then dinner. Please help me welcome Dr. Art Benjamin. Here he comes. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Uh, well, uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Art Benjamin, and I am a mathemagician. What that means is I combine my loves of math and magic to do something I call mathemagics. But before I get started, I've got a quick question for the audience, maybe some house lights. By any chance, did anyone happen to bring with them this afternoon or evening a, uh, a calculator? If you have a calculator, say, on your phone or something and you're comfortable using it, raise your hand. I need a few people to help me out with their calculators. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe not. Okay, I see one gentleman here. One and two and three and four. Would the four of you bring out your calculators? Join me here on stage. Let's give these volunteers a nice round of applause. Come on up. Great. All right. Was there one other person in this area? Did, did, did you, you well, come on up, come on up. Let's, let's, get a, let's get another young lady up here. One more round of applause for our brave volunteers. This way, thank you. Now, since I have not had the chance to work with these calculators, I need to first make sure they're all working properly. Uh, would somebody get us started, please, by giving us a two-digit number? How about a two-digit number? 87. And another two digit number? 50. 50 what? 52. Multiply 87 times 52. Make sure you get 4,524 exactly, or the calculators are not working. Are all your calculators working? Give those calculators a round of applause. Now, I noticed that took some of us a little time to get the answer. I'll give you a shortcut for multiplying even faster on the calculator. There's something called the square of a number, which most of you know is taking a number and multiplying it by itself. For instance, 5 squared would be 25. 6 squared would be 36. 73 squared would be something bigger, right? Now, <laughs> As you've noticed, most of your calculators have shortcuts for squaring numbers, and if you know them, you should use them. What I'm going to try and do now is to square, in my head, four two-digit numbers faster than they can do on their calculators, even using the shortcut method. What I'll ask is, how about four people in the second row? One, two, three, four. Each yell out a two-digit number, and if you would square the first, the second, the third, and the fourth one, I will try and race you to the answer. So, quickly, a two-digit number, sir? 91, okay, next. 96, next. 44, and one more. 31. Would you call out your answers, please? 8,281. 9,216. 1,936, and finally. Give them a round of applause. Let me. Uh, let me try to take this one step further. I'm going to try to square some three-digit numbers this time. I won't even write these down. I'll just call them out as they're called out to me. Anyone at all call out a three-digit number. Anyone on our panel verify the answer. And if I get the answer right, give me a thumbs up. If I make a mistake, let me know and I'll try and fix it. A three-digit number, anyone? 542. 542 squared is 293,764. Good. Another, uh, another three-digit number, please. 666. 666. I won't ask why. 443,556. Good. Another uh, three-digit number, sir. Um, 655. 655 is 429,025. Okay, good. One more three-digit three number, uh, three number, sir. Uh, 421. 421 is 177,241. Thank you very much. Let me try to take this one step further. 
going to try to square a four digit number this time. Now I'm not going to beat you to the answer on this one, but I will try to get the answer right. To make this a little bit more random, how about, uh, why, don't we, why don't we go up this aisle? If I can get four people, one, two, three, four each, call out a single digit between zero and nine, that'll be the four digit number that I'll square. Eight. Seven. Seven. Six. Six. Four. four. Okay, this will take me a little bit of time, so bear with me. Seventy-six million eight hundred seven thousand six hundred ninety six yeah. good thank you very much now I would attempt to square a five digit number and I can but unfortunately some calculators cannot what can you do and some of yours can, I know, yeah, I'll talk to you later about that. But in the meanwhile, let me conclude the first part of my show by trying something even trickier. Let's take the largest number on the board here, 9,216. Would you each enter 9216 on your calculator? And instead of squaring it this time, I want you to take that number and multiply it by any three-digit number that you'd like. But don't tell me what you're multiplying by. Just multiply it by any random three-digit number. So you should have as an answer either a six-digit or more probably a seven-digit number. How many digits do you have in your answer? Six or seven? 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 Oh, still working? Okay. S seven? Seven. seven. And you should take 9216 times your favorite three-digit number. Is there any possible way that I could know what seven-digit numbers they have? Say no. Good. <laughs> Then I shall attempt the impossible, or at least the improbable. What I'd like each of you to do is to call out for me any six of your seven digits, any six of them, in any order you'd like. One digit at a time, I shall try and determine the digit you've left out. So call out any six of your seven digits. Say them slowly so I'll repeat them for everyone to hear. In any order. Seven, zero, zero two, two, four, four nine, nine five. five. All right, remember the number you left out and don't forget it. You have a seven digit number called six of your seven, loud and clear. Three, three six, six, nine, nine, nine seven, seven, eight, eight three. three. Okay, remember the number you left out. Make, don't, don't forget it. You have a seven digit number, any six of yours in any order. Okay. Six, four, six, four five, five, two, two four, four, seven. Okay, I think I have it. Don't, don't forget yours. Finally, you have a seven digit number, any six of yours, really scramble them up this time. Three, three six, six three, three, two, two one. one Seven. Okay, let me do them in reverse order. Did you leave out the number five? Yes. Did you leave out the number eight? Yes. The two of you are giving me trouble. <laughs> do me a favor if you would, both of you, concentrate on the digit you left out. <laughs> what? It doesn't do any good, I know, but it's, it, it, it's, it looks dramatic. All right. And yet, I seem to be getting a lot of nothing. Which of you left out a zero? Neither of you left out a zero? No. The only explanation is you're canceling each other's thoughts. Did you each, each, each leave out the number nine? Oh, good. Okay, let's give all four of these people a nice round of applause. Thank you very much. Thank you. Phew. For my next number, Thank you. I'd like, <laughs> I'd like to present something we mathemagicians refer to as magic squares. For those of you unfamiliar with them, they're sort of like Sudoku on steroids. <laughs> now, I've done such an extensive study on magic squares that I'd like to create one for all of you right before your very eyes. But for this, I'll need another assistant, someone here I do not know. I'd love to use you. What's your name? Madeline. Let's give Madeline a nice round of applause. Coming up here, Madeline. 
Madeline right there. Madeline, is that M-A-D-E-L-I-N-E? Yes. I, so does your name tag says that too. Great. Madeline, let me ask you another question. And if it's too personal, I can change the question. Madeline, are you willing to share with us your birthday, including the year? Sure. Thank you, Madeline. <laughs> All right, Madeline, what is your birthday? Um, August 22nd. 822. 86, great. Madeline, if we were to add the numbers in your birthday together, let's see, we have 8 plus 22 is 30, plus 8 is 38, plus 16 is 44, so 44 becomes your magic number. What I'm going to try and do now, Madeline, is to fill out this box in such a way as to get your magic number appearing here as much as I possibly can. This will take me a couple of seconds, so bear with me here. I think that works. Madeline, would you choose for us any row? Row number two, three, or four, which would you like? Three. Three, all right, class, together. Seven plus nine is? 16. 16. Plus 21 is? 37. Plus seven is? 44. 44. The others were eight, 30, 38, 44, seven, 14, 21, 44, 22, 28, 36, 44. Would you choose a column, Madeline? One, two, three, or four? One. One, all right, class. Eight plus seven is? 15 plus 7 is 22 plus 22 is 44. The others were 22, 29, 38, 44, 8, 15, 36, 44, 6, 29, 36, 44. How about that? <laughs> now, now, Madeline, I'm not through with you. I decided that since this was your magic square, based on your birthday, at no extra charge, I would give you these diagonals as well. Check it out here. 22 plus 9 is 31, plus 7 is 38, plus 6 is 44, 8, 15, 36, 44. But I didn't stop there either. I decided since this was for Madeline, wouldn't it be great if we could get these four in the center to add up as well? Check it out here. 7 plus 7 is 14. 14, plus 21 is 35, plus 9 is 44. But did I stop there? No. Madeline, you may have noticed I put a little extra attention in that corner. I did that so I could get these four squares. 8 plus 22 is 30, plus 7 is 37, plus 7 is 44 to add up. And I figured, heck, as long as we got that group of four, let's have a party. We may as well get this group of four. 8, 14, 37, 44, 7, 16, 22, 44, 21, 28, 36, 44. But did I stop there? No, I said Madeline wouldn't be happy unless we got this group of four, 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 this group of four. Now, I have to apologize, Madeline. I was not able to get this group of four nor that group of four to add up, but I had to do it that way if I was going to get these four in the corners. I knew that would be important to you. 8, 14, 22, 44. But wait, wait. Here's the cool part. <laughs> Madeline, not only do those four numbers in the corners add to 44, if you look at them closely, you'll see we have 8, 22, 86. I gave you your birthday twice. I thought you'd like that. So please keep this as a souvenir from me. Let's all give Madeline a nice round of applause. Thank you, Madeline. Thank you. Hey, speaking of birthdays, by any chance, does anyone here happen to know the day of the week that they were born on? If you think you know your actual birthday and you're willing to share it, raise your hand. All right, starting with you, what year, if I may? And, and what month? Uh, December. December what? First. First, was that a Monday? Yeah. Yes. Some, somebody else. Yes, sir, what year? 58 and the month? November, November what? 25. 25. Was that a Tuesday? Yes. Excellent. Uh, who else uh, did I see? How about, how about yours? What year? Uh, it's 1951. 51 and the month? July, July what? 14. 14. Was that a Saturday? Good. Three different days. How about you, sir? What year? February 26, 1944. 1944, February 26. Was that a Saturday? Yes. Uh, towards the back, sir. What year? 1998, did you say? Yeah. March 5th was a Thursday. Yeah. yeah. And uh, how about, okay, over, over on this side. What year, please? Uh, 1943. 1943, did I hear? And what month? October, October what? 15. 15. Was that a Friday? Thank you very much. <laughs> Whew. 
Uh, do we have anyone here who does not know their day of the week but always wanted to find out? Uh, let's see. Okay, yours. Now, of course, if you don't know what it is, I could just make up an answer and you'd probably believe me. But luckily, we don't have to do that these days. There are apps for everything. Let me get one of you here to help me out. All you have to do is type in the year, and the rest is pretty clear. Uh, wh sir, what year were you born? 1950, so uh, turn to type in 1950. And uh, what month? January. January. Press the January button and look at the calendar. January what? 16th, 16th I believe, was a Monday. Can you confirm? No, it's, it's being retarded. What was the date? Okay. <laughs> 19. It's being retarded. You see how he deflected the blame? <laughs> blame the technology. Okay, 1950. Right, so far so good. And um, let me see, I have, to think, I have to think this out again. And then you said it was January the 16th, and is that a Monday? It is, okay. I'll tell you what, as long as you have the app with you, let's try something even more of a challenge. The app will go as far into the past as 1600, and as far into the future as the year 2525. <laughs> Actually 3000, but I just thought I wanted to use that number in there. <laughs> So choose any year between 1600 and 3000. What year would you like? Or do you, would you like to give us a year? No, not in the 1900s. Those are too close by. Something far in the past or far in the future. See, okay, you sir. 2525. I guess I should have seen that coming. Right, okay. I'll have to think about that one. Okay, and uh, how about, a, how about a, a month? What month would you like? March. And uh, March, uh, what would you like? Six. Six. Will that be a Tuesday? And it'll be cloudy, I think. <laughs> Thank you very much. So speaking of 2525, let me talk a little bit, just a little bit, about the future of math, the future of... Somebody asked me outside today, so well, what numbers will we be using a thousand years from now, 600 years from now? And I said, you know, that's one of the only things that we can, pardon the pun, count on, <laughs> that we are probably still going to be using the numbers, the digits that we use now, because if you think about it, very few things that we are using now that we were using a millennia ago, but our number system is one of them. So I, as far as languages go, I suspect there will be far, 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 far fewer languages in use, but I think our number system is, uh, is pretty safe. Uh, as far as, let's see, the number... 2525, not a very interesting number mathematically, but it is only five digits away from my favorite number, or at least it was my favorite number when I was a kid. We all have favorite numbers, right? Mine was 2520. Now let me throw that out as a question to the audience to see, can anyone figure out what was so interesting, mathematically interesting, about the number 2520? 520. This morning I was at UCLA doing a program for the Center for Talented Youth and there was a 10 year old who got it in like five seconds. Not to put you on the spot here. Uh, what is interesting about 2520? Well, the pro you're close. The product of the first 10 digits, 10 factorial, is 3,628,800. But you're not far from the right idea. His idea is actually very, do you want to try, do you want to re revise your answer? It is not the product of the first 10 digits, but it is something to do with the first 10 digits. The sum, no, that's 55, that's, um, um, <laughs> in the very back, what do you think? The products of the, that is true, but not what I made it, I mean, that, that's interesting. Um, and true, uh, but that's not what caused me as a kid to find that number so fascinating. With your hand up, way up, what, what do you say? It's 2 times 5, 10, 10 divided by 2, that's equal to 5. So 2, 5, 2, 5. Well, there are interesting patterns within that number, but there's something inherent about the number itself, and it has to do with not just the numbers 3 through 7, but all the numbers from 1 through 10, sir. 
It's the smallest number divisible by all the numbers from 1 through 10. Give them a round of applause. Well done. It is what we would call the least common multiple of 1 through 10. Let me throw out a few other numbers. Um, 35. That is unfortunately where the United States ranks in mathematical ability. <laughs> and this is only among the 50 countries that participate in the PISA study. But that's where we are. Why are we there? I'm sure there are a number of, number of reasons. But let me give you one number that we should all be afraid of, and this is 47. And 47 is um, the percent of our K through 12 teachers who came into college in the bottom third of their class. 47% of our K through 12 teachers were in that bottom third as measured by their incoming SAT scores. SAT scores don't, doesn't measure everything, but that's kind of scary. Uh, whereas when you look at the countries that dominate us year after year on the test, countries like, like uh, Singapore, Finland, Hong Kong, uh, South Korea, it's 100% of their teachers are in the top third of their class. Only 20% of our K through 12 teachers come from that top third. And I think that is a, a recipe for disaster. Um, if, you know, we, we spend a lot of time looking at, well, what are the, what are the people in Singapore doing to, you know, to, why are their students performing so well? I mean, just one of these years, I would like them to give the exam not just to the students, but to their teachers as well. And does anyone have any doubt that where our teachers would rank probably and out of that 50 would be about there too, right? You can't expect our students to be outperforming the teachers. Only 20% of our teachers are in that top third. Um, if, I mean, I don't, I mean, so what do we do? We look at their curriculum and we say, you know, I mean, there, there are schools that are using Singapore math and I have nothing against it. In fact, there are some really good ideas in Singapore math, but I don't want the Singapore math curriculum. I want the Singapore math teachers, <laughs> right? That the people who themselves were passionate about math as when they were young. So, um, okay, uh, let me, before I launch into my grand finale, let me do uh, one or two very quick uh, advertisements. If you are interested, as Michael mentioned before, uh, in the introduction, if you're interested in learning more about mental math or m math as it should be taught in school, I have four DVDs out at the book table. One is on the secrets of mental math. One is on the joy of mathematics, that's middle school through high school level mathematics. One's on the mathematics of games, gambling, and puzzles, everything from using math to count cards to play expert backgammon to solve any Rubik's Cube or Sudoku. And um, finally, my, special, my, my research specialty, discrete mathematics, which is the mathematics that underlies computer science and cryptography. The other, um, the other ad is for my college, because whenever I'm in front of such a brilliant group, my school wants you to know about them. I have, for the last 26 years, been a professor of mathematics at Harvey Mudd College. Yay! Any, uh, thank you, from Caltech, oh, warms my heart. Uh, any mutters in the audience? Any? Uh, okay, wonderful. Um, I, we're small but proud. I'm only less, fewer than 5,000 students have graduated from Harvey Mudd College in its history. It's only about 50 years old. Uh, 800 students there, about less than 200 students graduate each year. They all study math, science, and engineering. A third of their coursework is in the humanities, so they know what, how their work is going to impact society. A third of them go on to get PhDs and uh, pay Payscale.org ranks it number one in terms of return on investment and average starting and mid-career salary. So they're doing something right. Um, but the statistic that I couldn't have told you 10 years ago that I'm very proud of now to say is that almost 50% of the students at Harvey Mudd College are women. Yes. That was not true 
When I started 26 years ago, when I was there, it was less than 25% female. In fact, they said the ratio was pi to one. Um, <laughs> The women had a saying there. They said, as far as finding guys were concerned, the odds were good, but the goods were odd. <laughs> you know? That might still be true today, but I, I, I shouldn't go there. All right. Last, uh, so if I'd like to end with something I alluded to earlier when we had those people on stage with calculators. Uh, yes, question there? Yeah. Uh, what do you think of this common core? Uh, what do I think of the common core? I think, the, I think the ideas behind the Common Core are good. I think the people behind it, the people who, made the, who, who developed the curriculum, were the right people to put the curriculum there. It, it's really very little to argue against it. Basically, it's saying that we want to educate problem solvers. Less about specific information. I mean, you have to have the mastery, the basics. You need to know your multiplication tables and such. But, it's, but just as important is that you, you become a confident and creative problem solver. One of the things they advocate that I've been a long advocate of is multiple approaches to problem solving. You hear people get all upset. They say, they're telling my kid to solve this problem in some cockamamie way. I don't know what this. I said, that's fine. That's fine. Mathematics has for too long been used as an exercise in disciplined thinking when it could be and should be used as an exercise in creative thinking. Right? <laughs> don't. Don't you, and I, I do this in my college classrooms and we should do this in the pre-college classrooms. Don't just find one way to solve the problem. Look for several ways. And some, way, some of them might be a little brute force. Some of them are kind of weird and wacky. Some of them are, are thinking outside the box. But if you're careful, you'll always get to the right answer. And I think that's, um, so, I mean, they, they, any, anything can be politicized. Anything could be ruined by, by over-testing and not having teachers who themselves understand what they're, teaching, but I think um, by and large the, 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 the intent and the potential of the Common Core is a good one. That's, that's what my, my opinion. Okay, um, so the last thing I'd like to do, and I'm happy to talk to you on the panel, I'll be on the panel as well as outside at the book table, um, is uh, if um, uh, I'm going to try to square a five-digit number. Uh, so if you have a big calculator, feel free to bring it out. But to make my job more interesting for you as well as for me, I'm going to do this last problem thinking out loud. So you can actually honestly hear what's going on in my mind while I do a calculation of this size. Let's create a five-digit number. How about, uh, how about the fourth row here? I haven't picked on you yet. First five of you. Call out a single digit. And that'll be my five-digit number. Six. Six. Four, three, eight, nine. 64,389 squared, yuck. Let me explain to you how I'm going to attempt this problem. I'm gonna break the problem down into three parts. I'll do 64,000 squared plus 389 squared plus 64,000 times 389 times two. Add all those numbers together, and with any luck, arrive at the answer. Now let me recap. Thank you. <laughs> While I explain something else. As I do this last calculation, you will hear certain words, in addition to numbers, enter the calculation. Let me explain what that is. This is a phonetic code, a mnemonic device that I use that allows me to convert numbers into words. I store them as words and later on retrieve them as numbers. I know it sounds complicated. It's not. I just don't want you to think you're seeing something crazy happening up here. <laughs> There's definitely a method to my madness. One last instruction for my judges with calculators. Now, who's got an answer? Raise your hand. Oh, a bunch of you. You should have a 10-digit answer beginning with four, ending with one, in between. I don't know yet. There's a 50% chance that I'll make a mistake somewhere in the middle. If I do, don't tell me what the mistake is. Just say you're close or something, and I'll try and figure it out, which can be pretty entertaining in itself. If, however, I am right, whatever you do, don't keep it to yourselves. <laughs> <clears throat> Make sure everybody knows that I got the answer right because this is my big finish, okay? So without any more stalling, here we 
go. I'll start the problem in the middle with 64 times 389. Now 64 is 8 times 8. I'll take advantage of that. Now 389 times 8 is 3040 plus 72 is 3112. Multiply that by 8 to get 24,896. Double that to get 49,990. Uh, no, no, uh, 49,792. Let me try that one more time. I got 24,896. Double that to get 49,792, that becomes rope cabin. Rope cabin is 49,792. I, I haven't said any part of my answer yet, but I'm about to. Rope cabin. Okay, next I do 64 squared, which is 4,096, so I can say 4 billion. Take the 96 and add that to rope. 96 plus 47 is 143 mil, million. Cabin, cabin. Okay, finally, we do 389 squared. That's 400 times 378 plus 11 squared. It's 100. 151,200 plus 121 is 151,321. Minty, if I need it. Minty, take the 151, add that to cabin to get 943,321. Oh, shoot. Oh, okay. Close. Close as in just one digit off? One digit off. Well, that's pretty close. All right, let me see. Um, <laughs> All right, uh, so here, uh, so we, we, we had rope cabin. Assuming everything was right up to rope cabin, let me see if, um, now I, I feel very confident about the four billion and I feel very confident about the 321, right? The, 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 end, the ends are good. Okay, uh, let's see, cabin, cabin. If I take this uh, 151, add that to the 792, darn it, I'm still getting the 943. If I take the rope and add that to uh, 20, 40, 49, 49, add that, wait, no, um, take the 151, add that, oh, wait, 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 is that it? Um, 151,000, okay, take the 150, is it this that's off? Yes. Okay, so I take the, I, I've got, I've got, um, who? No, okay, uh, all right, so uh, I've got 3,040 plus 72 is 3,112 times 8, 24,896, double that to get, uh, 49,792. So I've got rope cabin, uh, seven, uh, okay, rope cabin, and then I take the 4,096, the nine, oh, 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 I got it, I got it, I got it. 145 million? Excellent. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed Mathemagics. I'm Arthur Benjamin. Thank you.